Yes. Now I think it's recording. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to ask you what a normal day in your life was like now during lockdown. Um. Yeah. What it's like. I mean, it's it's kind of like pretty repetitive at this point. Obviously, I think for <laughs> everyone, but um. I really find like I, I'm just going through these like weird hours of like staying up till like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. now and then and or and then like I'll like wake up at like 1 p.m. or something but then I'll go through like different like layers of that where it'll change and then it's like all good and then but at this point it's just kind of like back to like those like weird hours again which it which is fine because I think like when it, then like when I do get up I um, luckily I kind of have like my music stuff set up now. So I've definitely kind of got into a routine of, um, you know, just doing stuff, you know, like when, when this first all started, uh, I was in LA and like um, kind of like the first, the first few weeks were pretty difficult. You kind of just like adjust and realize that like you, like luckily for me, I was already kind of just doing the same thing. And, you know, a lot of people say that, but it's like, you know, I, I always was just kind of like inside and just recording and, you know, and that's kind of it really. But yeah, so I mean, now, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely very um, motivated and very creative at this point, you know. So luckily it's been pretty good. I mean, I definitely like for other people who, um, you know, maybe like depend on like going to a studio or having like other people around them to kind of like feed off like creativity and stuff. It's like, it would be pretty hard, but I think I'm in a pretty good position. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, when it first all started, I was devastated because basically going to concerts was my it was my only hobby. It was more my, my passion. Yeah, like, yeah. That's all I did. And then at some point sure. I was like, what am I to do? Like yeah. am I do do I what can I do? Like there's nothing else I would do. And, and yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess because um, with your stuff, it's like it's it's like the photography and also like the reviews and like uh, live shows and all that, you know. And uh, yeah, it's 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 really difficult um, for sure. I mean, you know, you're still doing this now, so I mean, you just kind of like you just have to like really like learn to adapt with everything going on because I, you know, I don't think this is gonna like just instantly change overnight. You know, I think as like a creative, you kind of just have to be like, okay, like this really sucks and this is pretty like harmful for what I'm doing, but how can I, I, you know, honestly, I, I think it takes a lot of like the competition out of it. Um, you know, if like you're a genuine artist and just doing it for the love of it, like you just keep going, you know, because obviously there's a big like money aspect of it where you're like, okay, like I'm actually not going to be getting any money for this, you know, of like live shows or touring or anything like that. But, you know, but if you can kind of like see it in a way of, okay, I guess I'll just adapt and just write, kind of seek things out, you know, like, I don't know. And and I mean, luckily for me right now, I mean, like this week, like Frankenstein came out. So it's like, it's kind of good. It has like a, it, ha it definitely um, puts my mind somewhere else, you know, <laughs> which is good. I'm very fortunate for that. And speaking about it, it's perfect that you brought it up. Um, <laughs> uh, I read on, that website under the radar that you wrote it in 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Which is incredible to me, especially in terms of the the lyrics. All right. Like, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I'm no I'm no uh, real singer or something, but sometimes with friends we play and we try to write songs. But especially for the lyrics, I can never like that's incredible that you did it in 30 minutes. And I wanted to know how you functioned or at least for this particular single, how you were functioning when you wrote it? How, how I was functioning, kind of like um, how I went about, like writing it or like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, basically, like the way that track was done is exactly how every other track that I do is done. Like everything is under like 30 minutes, you know, and like all and that includes lyrics and instrumentation and everything, you know. It's interesting that like looking back on those lyrics now, because that song's like two years old. That, that was the start of 2019 that I wrote that. Um, and the way I do everything, I, you know, I'd kind of just do like spur of the moment, like complete like stream of consciousness. And um, then I kind of just like put everything into like a big playlist. So I think in 2019, at the end of it, I had like 93 tracks. 
So at the start of the year, I know January I had January I had 28 tracks. So I had all them and I basically just put it all together and then I like sent it to, you know, sent it to my manager. And I was just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And like he like constantly gets bombarded with like tracks of mine because I'll just do it all and then just like send it to him. And I think I guess there was just something about like this collection of songs that are coming out over the next few months that um because they were all written around the same time, they all kind of gelled together, you know. We can kind of piece like whatever collection we want out of it, you know. Mm. But yeah, like like I was saying with the lyrics, like I I look back now and I'm like, oh like they're actually like like quite sad like <laughs> lyrics, you know. That's what I thought as well. Like it's <laughs> funny because the, the the magazines and stuff, they describe the track like they're like very upbeat song and I was like, yeah, was that, that's not yeah. That's what I that's what I, I there, there's something like I just there's kind of something about like the uh, like the juxtaposition juxtaposition of like um you know having very upbeat music and then the lyrics just being like supremely honest you know but I there's just no real other way that you know I don't really think about anything while I'm doing it you know like I, I purposely just like you know whatever the first thing I play like that's like what it is you know. And that's why the tracks are done like so fast because it's like, oh, that's done. I see everything as just diary entries, you know. And then when I do upload it and stuff, I have like the time and the date and all of that stuff in it. So then when I look back on it now, like I have like all these dates and the times of when I did it. And it's just, I just find it really interesting to just like go back and listen to these things and like totally pinpoint how I was in that time, you know. That's how everything is done. I think with Frankenstein, there was just something... I know, something about it that was um really had that kind of like the perfect the perfect kind of like kind of com complete happiness but also uh you know if you give it the time of like actually listening to it or reading the lyrics then it's like this is this is dark but I think it's also um I think there's something kind of about those lyrics that is kind of universal as well in a way I don't know but yeah to do with Frankenstein I really didn't think anything of it you know, which is like a lot of my stuff you know so it's just because I'm just doing it so to kind of like see it like kind of get chosen as like the single or something it's like it's cool and like it feels good and it feels great like you know having kind of doing interviews or you know seeing press about it with people that like I respect giving it the time you know other than that like I'm not really I don't really hold much to any of my songs Because I'm just doing it, you know. <laughs> oh no, but it's but it's just funny because like then some people are just like, I can't do that. Like I can't do lyrics and stuff, or like, I can't like you know I have to sit on it for you know. Some people take like you know months to like do a track, and I think I think I just got to a point where I was just like, I just want this stuff done. Like I just need to like get this stuff out of myself, you know. And like I just kept that going. Like I just I just really I just really stuck to that and just kind of kept doing it. In a genuine way, because like I just I don't, you know, I don't expect my stuff to be like widely like widely known or anything. But then it's like kind of doing stuff like this, where like you really like the track and like we're talking about it now. It's like that feels good, you know, because it's something very strange about um, releasing like kind of like releasing music and also releasing a song that was done in like 30 minutes. You know? Yeah, but it's like random people connect to you through your song. That you don't yeah. like, you don't even know these people, mm. and they just it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's honestly amazing, and like I don't. That's like a to like a totally like a whole other feeling of um, someone that could be just like you, like on the other side of the world, you know, just listening to it and like being like, wow, like that's me, because like you know, obviously, like everyone does that to music, you know, it's like one of like the most beautiful things about music that you know you could randomly just stumble across a song and you're like this is my song for the next year or like the next you know and it just sticks with you so like with everything that's kind of going on right now it's like you know i'm just i'm just psyched that like a few people like dig it you know it's cool like it's just because <laughs> i'm doing it anyway you know i'm not um i'm not really trying to push anything but that's that's definitely the long answer to that <laughs> about yeah, how it was, how it was at that time, you know. I like how raw the 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 way you work, how raw it is, and I think it's kind of you, I I could hear it through your song and even through your whole the whole album. 
that you released. And uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Have you learned so, German? Have I learned German? I've no, I, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, luckily, like being around Miriam and her family, like I can pick up on a lot of it now. Svatsa Katza, Black Cat, I was good, you know, it's all good. You know, just random ones like that. Um, the Peffy, yeah, no, yeah, the Peffy. Sorry, it's that it's that, that mint shot or something. It's that weird alcohol. I, I, learned, it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I learned it in Berlin. That's the first word I learned. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's the classic. Um, yeah, the Berlin Berlin lingo. I think when I because I just got like a artist visa here for three years, like uh, last week, which is really good. But I know that when you kind of go for your um, like the proper visa and things, then you have to obviously be pretty good at German so I haven't put the time away to like sit down and like no I'm not, I'm not pressuring you or anything I just no, no, it's all good I know it's like I'm, it's definitely it's definitely something I will do yeah I mean I was I, I I I recorded a song um the other day and I was like the chorus is in German um and I, and I was like oh yeah sweet like I've I've got it down and then like Miriam, I could hear Miriam coming up the stairs and like she came in and she was just like laughing at me. And I was like, well, you know, I was like, I'm really trying. I've got Lou in, the, Lou in the interview now as well. Does she respond, Lou? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this song is also part of a, an EP that will come out later this year. Is that right? It shouldn't be too. I don't think it's going to be like, it won't be like end of the year or anything, you know, it's going to be. Okay. Like midway through the year, probably. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely not going to be after like July or anything, you know. It's like I don't think there's like really any point in just, you know, I've I've never really found a point, especially like with EPs. It's like, okay, I bet you guys are really looking forward to these like five songs. Like, let's spread this out. It's like, oh. and and I, and I think maybe for like a lot of people, like that's cool. But I think for me, when like I'm already like, you know, already like hundreds of songs deep. I just want to get this stuff out, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it'll, be, it'll be like around like June or something, yeah. Good. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's going to be later, a bit later this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I wanted to know a bit more about it. Uh, I, I think I read somewhere that you recorded it in Sydney, Studio 301. Uh, no, I, I recorded and wrote everything on my own at home. Oh, yeah. In <laughs> no, in, uh, in Brisbane, when I was still in Brisbane. Okay. I don't know where I read that. Okay. No, no, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, so basically my label was like, oh, do you think you could just, you could do this next release, like, on your own? And I was like, okay, you know, so, but um, obviously there was more to it than that. But, but yeah, I, I ended up just, like, doing it all on my own. And at the start of last year when I was in L.A., we... You know, I kind of got in touch with, I got in touch with this guy, Nicholas Van Hess, who's, uh, does like mixing and producing and all that kind of stuff. And he, I found him because he works with like Atlas Sound, like Bradford Cox and Deer Hunter, War on Drugs. I think he did like the War on Drugs album. Mm -hmm. And I mean like Deer Hunter and like Bradford Cox, like that kind of way of writing. And because I find that they're, they're actually quite similar as well. Like, I mean, like if you listen to like the Atlas Sound uh, records, like, a lot of it can be quite like upbeat, but then like the lyrics are just like super honest. So I think I've always been very attracted to that. So, and Nicholas was cool to mix it too, you know, it was, it was kind of like a really special experience how like I kind of just produced and did everything and then was able to, you know, send him the stuff and then he mixed it, you know. Um, oh, so and you then, recorded it in your yeah, room and, then after and you that, send it to him. It's mastered yeah. and that's where the, um, where uh, Steve Smart from Studio 301 and, Sydney did it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's weird. I think you're on. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I do research. I read <laughs> some stuff and it just goes all in my head. And I, wrote, ah, just... <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to ask you again, because of random stuff I read online, what your yeah. relationship with fashion was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really pushing that at the moment. 
Yeah, um, I thought, why? Like, is there something? Like, uh, yeah, yeah I, no, I, I saw you on Fred Perry. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, that, was, that, that was when um, That's Rock and Roll came out. Yeah, I did like a playlist and stuff for Fred Perry. I think fashion and um, music just like literally just go hand in hand. I don't think there's really much difference. I mean, I think you can definitely tell when someone, um, I don't know if it comes off weird, but I think you can definitely tell when someone's, someone is dressed by someone else, you know, and it's like, this is like our image, you know, it's like, I think that's like the most like insincere thing. I think if like you're very genuine about like, you're just kind of living it and like around like creativity all the time and just like doing it and not worry about anything, then you like, you have, you end up having like your own style and things, you know? But yeah, but I mean, recently I, uh, you know, I got asked to like walk for like Paris Fashion Week and stuff for like a UK brand. And, you know, it's just like random stuff like that. Did but you just I, go like? Yeah, I was just walking. <laughs> But did you, didn't you have to learn or something how to walk? I've seen on no, I, TV. I think, I, think with, I think with that certain, I think with that certain brand, they were like kind of just chill with just having. Um, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Who they liked, so. But yeah, and then there's kind of been other things, like a couple of things with like Gucci and stuff like that. But but that's like not like official things. I mean, that was an official thing because Miriam works fairly close with a lot of those brands and things, and she did like a campaign yeah. for Fendi and. Gucci and then you know I was able to like get my like get like sunlight on one of just like the Instagram videos or something you know no it's cool I think it's uh, I think it's really nice and I think um I think kind of like the way it's happening now is a lot more um, maybe like a lot more relaxed than if I had outwardly set to be involved in a certain scene you know what I mean you mean the more glamorous side of no, I, I, th- I think it's just like if I was like purposely trying to be like, I want to be in this, I want to be in this, I want to like go down this way, you know, but I think it's like very fluidly just kind of happened, you know, because I, I think if people, if, if you stick around long enough, then people kind of like come across your stuff anyway and like see that you're a certain way. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, I, def- I definitely didn't like try to be put in like, try to go into like the fashion world or anything you know i was definitely very interested in it and very like influenced in it in certain ways but i wasn't um yeah intentionally trying to do anything but it's cool i really dig it like i've got yeah yeah i was just wondering like okay so he he likes he seems to like fashion or at least for sure yeah yeah. okay to opportunities (laughs) of course oh yeah yeah um what can we expect from emerson snow in the future well, I'm just going to be doing what I'm doing, uh, just writing. I mean, that's the thing as well. It's like, who knows? Like, who, like, I don't really know, like, how, like, if my stuff will get picked up or anything like that. I think all I can really do is just kind of, like, keep doing what I'm doing. And as hard as it is for me to, like, you know, not compare myself to a lot of other people, a lot of other artists, you know, it's... um that stuff doesn't really, um, that stuff doesn't really get you anywhere. Uh, if you just like are kind of sitting in that like self-loathing or like, oh, I haven't got any plays and things, you know? And like, I mean, I definitely still f- feel like that to a, to a degree, like days here, days there. But um, I think it's very important to just kind of like stick with what you're doing. And I, th- I th- yeah, like, like what I said, it's like, I think if you stick around long enough and like you're genuine about what you're doing, people, people get attracted to it and like someone will stumble upon it at some point, you know, I don't think you have to worry about like, even like your stuff, you know, it's like, if you just like keep doing stuff, it's like people see that. That's what I saw. That's why I reached out to you. You know, it's like, it's all good. You know? Yeah. Thank you so much. I was like, okay. So he checked out my account that he saw what I was doing. He was like, okay, well, that's really nice of you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Usually it's the opposite. It's me who tries to write people and harass people until they say yes. <laughs> Do this interview right now. <laughs> no, but yeah, sometimes you have to try really hard. But I was like you. I used to compare myself a lot to other people who are doing kind of the same as me. But now... There are other people doing the same things as us. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, but I think it's just like whatever angle you have, it's like, you know, if, 
it, it's just like being genuine and just like genuinely already doing this stuff, you know, and not exactly. and outwardly trying to go somewhere, you know. I think it's really important when you're young to like, you know, I mean, I grew up in like a small town. Like I knew when I was like 17, like I would leave and I left on my own when I was 17 to Brisbane, you know, and you kind of like take these like selfish things for yourself. I don't know, to just like make that change, you know. But yeah, I think now it's kind of to a point like you just, you can't be in that mindset of like pushing yourself to be a certain way because that stuff like doesn't really get you anywhere in your head anyway, you know. I mean, there are a lot of people that do do that and do get places, you know, but I think uh, that doesn't really interest me to a certain degree of um, being anything that I'm not other than like whatever I'm already doing. You know? Yeah. I think we should just maybe push ourselves, but just to be like, that will sound like a life coach, but uh, the best version of ourselves. Not Got to be the best version of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Though. I mean, I can't to live by that. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm finished. Is there anything you want to to add? Not really. I mean, just thanks. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, see you soon. Yeah. Same here. I can't stop looking at that goose next to you. Great goose. <laughs> I, st I started up, I started looking at the goose instead of you when you were talking that's fine yeah uh, I mean, some people in the rooms they have uh, you know certificates of law or something and I've got um, the hamburglar from McDonald's I've got uh, Mickey Mouse here and the goose you know it's all good it's, it's nice it's got a little personality yeah <laughs> bring me to life